All right, you're back with Master Beekeeper Jason Miller in part five of our honey series. And uh, today is the day we've been waiting for. We're actually pulling the honey today. We're robbing, as we call it. Uh, this is our second yard of the day. So you can see we've got a little bit of honey on the truck already. So all these boxes are full uh, of honey. Uh, we generally use the 10 wheelers. You can see it's a much bigger truck. We use these 10 wheelers when we're pulling honey because, ah, son of a. You got stung? Stung in the nose. All right, so we're back. Pulled the stinger out of my nose. It's always part of the problem of, uh, you know, it's nice to start out without the veil, but but you run that risk, especially with the guys out here working. Um, and it's a cloudy day, so the bees are a little a little grouchier. They always are when it's overcast. As I was saying, we use these bigger trucks because each of these pallets right here um, will weigh upwards of 2,000 pounds, which is about the capacity of, of the forklift. So. Um, you know, you're, you're getting to the point where the forklift can just barely pick up the pallet. And if you fill this truck full, you've got 13 pallets of honey potentially at 2,000 pounds a piece. You've got 26,000 pounds of honey on this truck. It's far more than one of those little trucks can, can haul. So we use these bigger 10 wheelers when we're pulling honey. Um, so let's get over here. We'll talk a little about the process and uh, hopefully we'll find some honey in these boxes. So this is one of our yards, as you can see. Uh, they got a fair number of supers on. We start off by uh, opening up the hives and cleaning the wax off the covers. So that's what they're doing over there. They're, they've always got quite a bit of wax. Look at all the pollen that's coming in. You can really see the pollen on these girls. So uh, we're in late August here in North Dakota. Uh, still a little bit of a honey flow, but it's mostly wrapped up. So we're gonna pull all the honey supers off. If you remember, uh, we got our two deeps here and then we've got our honey super. So this particular hive has four honey supers on it. Whereas this girl here has uh, seven honey supers. Each of these weighs 30 pounds, roughly full, uh, 30 to 40 pounds. So uh, some of these hives have really done well in this yard and made quite a bit of honey here this summer. We've had great weather, uh, a lot of heat, a lot of rain, and so they, they look really good. Now, the next step, kind of the first thing we do is we pull off the cover, start cleaning the wax off, is we put these fume boards on the, on the hives. These things we spray with a substance we call Bego. Uh, it's got a long complex uh, name. There's, there's a number of variations out there, but basically it's a stinky mm, substance, liquid, that we spray on and it repels the bees. It repels the humans, it repels everyone. It's pretty bad stuff. If you could smell through the camera, you'd, uh, you'd be smelling this. As you can see, there's no bees on top of this box no bees crawling out there's no bees you know really anywhere since this has just been sitting we start off by putting them on just a little bit sideways or off to one side that allows for some airflow to come in it also allows for the bees to see the sun and they kind of orient themselves if you just come right up it's a hot day these things are solar activated so the heat of the sun uh, causes those fumes to really get going on a hot day you just come up and put this on it's so powerful that overpowers the bees. It's almost like they're drunk in there. They don't know which way's up, down. They can't find their way out. Um, and, and so they don't, they aren't driven down like we want. Because we don't want to bring any of the bees back to the warehouse. We want these boxes, just pure honey, no bees. We want all the bees driven down in here to the deeps because these deeps are going to remain here at the yard as, as we'll see at the end. So all these honey supers are going to be gone. What we'll be left with is uh, those double deeps down there when, when we're finished. So like I said, we usually start off just leaving a little bit of a, of a gap for airflow. Um, so I've been going around setting a few. We have some of our frames that are wood and we've started to transition over to plastic. So I'll just show you, here's a plastic frame uh, with honey on it. And if you look here, you can see the bees, they started out with just straight foundation plastic. And then they start drawing out that wax. You know, they secrete the wax from a wax gland on their bodies. So they built all of this that you see here. And as they begin to fill the cells with honey, they, you can see some of these, they've started. So they'll kind of start in the center and then they'll work their way out. So they're just filling these still with honey. Now we get to this kind of transition point where you can see there's a, a, a big difference between here and here. So we've got no honey here. We've got honey that they're working on. We, this is, um, you know, not very ripe honey. This is fresh nectar. They're probably still drying it down and working that honey to get the moisture content down and obviously filling those cells. Once they get those cells completely filled, they will cap them over as we see that they've done through all this section. So when we say cap it over, 
what I'm talking about is they're going to put a really thin layer of wax on top of the honey to seal it in there. And that uh, keeps it from being able to run out. It seals the moisture. It seals it from any sort of contaminants getting in. I mean, it's, it's protected essentially forever inside that cell until the time comes for them to eat it. Um, they are making the honey for themselves, not for us. And so uh, they, they've got their winter stores you know, all ready to go here. Now we take a portion of it, but as I mentioned before, we're gonna leave those, those deeps down below. And each of those can have upwards of 60, 70 pounds of honey in each one of those boxes. So it's plenty for them to make it through winter um, with what they have down there. And all of this is, is excess. So um, like, I, like I mentioned, right under here, there's all the fresh honey. They just finished capping, capping that over. And, and look how nice that is. That's beautiful alfalfa honey right there. Delicious stuff. Um, so those are the plastic frames, and then we have another pallet over there where you can see the wood frames. And uh, figured we'd just jump in here. If you bring the, probably can't see these are so tall, but if you bring the camera up here, you can see all the bees running around on the top. This is what they look like right, right when we take that cover off. Um, as soon as we throw that fume board on, it starts looking like this. And it's driven these bees completely down. There's not a honeybee in this box. So let me just pull, pull this. Uh, one off. Now they really stick them together and like I said they're they're pretty heavy so it usually takes just a little bit of muscling and tweaking to get them off but no bees in there. Drove them all the way down and out and we'll just bring it over here. Stack it up and once they're seven high we'll put them on the truck. We do seven high because eight gets to be so heavy that the forklift tips over um, if they're really loaded with honey. And then of course I put the uh, fume board back on and, and continue uh, driving them down. I usually like to have about three on a pallet with fume boards. That way I can take this box off, for example, and start driving them down here. And I just kind of walk around the pallet, working my way down until I get all the honey supers off. Um, you see we do it on a pallet with these drip trays. That catches all the honey that runs down through the boxes as we stack them up. And then we'll take it back to our extraction facility where I'll show you how we spin the honey out and uh, actually get it into containers uh, back at the warehouse. Okay, so we're kind of at the midpoint of the yard. You can see once I rob all the, the bees down, once I push them down with these fume boards, because again, we don't want to take any back to our uh, processing facility. We want to save them all, keep them inside their colony. Look how nice and full she looks. She'll do great over winter. We've got a good population. We're on a cloudy, windy day like today, when uh, the fume boards aren't working real good. We'll combine it with a little smoke under there to help. And uh, I'll give these girls a little bit of smoke, get them to go down into their hive, then we'll put the cover on. So now let's, uh, we'll get to work. I'll set up a little video here and, and uh, we'll watch the process as we work through the yard. All right, so that does it for the honey robbing. Um, you can see we're all done. A lot of the bees are still hanging outside of their boxes. They'll be in by tomorrow, um, but they still have a little bit of that lingering smell from the smoke and the, and the fume boards. Um, we pulled a total of 208 honey supers out of this yard. If we say those averaged about 20 pounds of honey per box, so 208 times 20 pounds, we're at 4,160 uh, pounds of honey off of these 40 hives. So if we divide that by 40 hives, we average 104 pounds of honey off of each one of these hives this summer. So this yard did really well. That's above our, our average um, and, and really happy with it. The bees look great and now we're going on to our next yard.